Hello, welcome back to Biological Fitness. Today we are going to really focus in on the hip joints. So some of our previous explorations have had something to do with really connecting to the floor, finding a skeletal connection up through the legs and into the spine. And most recently we were looking at how can we make movements of the legs and not use the spine unnecessarily. So what's the connection point between the legs and the spine? It's the hip joints. Inside your pelvis, of course, you have the hip sockets. You can just think as a very just basic kind of um, image of a bowl with a ball inside. The ball would be the top of your femur, your thigh bone, longest bone in your body. And you can do what I'm doing if you like. You make a, a fist, and then with your other hand, you sort of place it over the fist. You imagine you have a ball and a bowl. And how can you move the ball inside the bowl or move the bowl over the surface of the ball, right? So the top of the leg can move in the hip joint, and then the pelvis can move over the top of the leg. So this possibility for this sliding action inside the hip joint is what leads to what we call differentiation. In other words, the pelvis and the legs can move independently. However, for a lot of folks, there isn't much differentiation there and to move the pelvis means to move the legs. So what we're going to be working on in this awareness through movement lesson is how to find a little more of that differentiation. And when I say a little more, it really might be a little, but a little goes a long way. I think you'll find that out as we go along. So part of our approach this time is going to involve coming back to a particular, uh, coming back to a, a series of movements, some of which we'll actually revisit many times, but we're going to be continually trying to clarify the image. As a kind of metaphor, you could say, we're going to look at the hip joints from many different angles. We're gonna think about the front, the back, the top, the bottom, in that, in that way. And you don't actually have to have some very high level anatomical knowledge to do this. It's just about directing your attention in a particular way and looking for sensations and relationships. And I'll guide you through that. So we're going to basically be working lying on the back today, but we're going to begin our exploration in standing. Okay, so please come to stand. And to begin, just start walking through the space that you're in. And feel as you walk, the sensation of bringing your weight over the left leg, bringing your weight over the right leg, As you lift one leg and you lift the other, the feeling of how the legs swing below the pelvis. And each time you step with a new leg, can you get a sense of how the pelvis moves over the standing leg? So bring your attention in the area of your groin as you walk. And if you compare the left and right side, do you get a feeling that there's almost a little more space in one of your hip joints? Notice as you're walking, if you slow things down a bit, just walk slower, you can take smaller steps. Do you feel more stable over one leg? 
Do you even feel like you get a little more taller when you stand over one leg? Is it easier to lengthen upwards through the spine? So to slow this down even more, just stand in one place and very slowly begin to shift your weight over one leg and then the other. And listen to how do you do this? So it may be that if you want to come onto the left leg, you're kind of pushing off of the right foot or pushing off the left foot to go to the right leg. When you do that, just notice what happens to that foot that you're moving away from. Do you find that you're rolling to the inner edge? And if you are, try really emphasizing that you keep the outer edge of the foot down on the floor. You even maybe push more off of the outer edge. So the outer edge of the left foot stays connected as you move your pelvis more over the right leg. And you'll maybe even feel a sense of a little more space on the outside of the left ankle when you do that. And then coming over the left leg, keeping the outer edge of the right foot connected. And if you like just to understand why this might be important, go on to the right leg, but just let your left foot roll inwards. Or go on to the left leg, coming onto the inner edge of your right foot. And then again, make these movements, keeping the outer edge of the foot grounded. Okay, come to the middle for a moment. And we're going to do just a little bit of balancing here. So if you have any concern about your balance, feel free to stand next to the wall so you can have one hand on the wall, or if you have a chair, you can put your hand on the back of the chair. But now bring your weight over your left leg and take your right foot maybe a little out to the side and lift the heel off the ground. So you're just touching the ground with the toes of your right foot. And the point here is that it gives you a little stability, but you're really trying to minimize having any weight in the right leg and you're standing over the left leg. Now, as we play with this, you can always come back on to standing on two legs if you need a rest. But as you're standing like this over the left leg, can you now begin to shift again a very small amount, a little to the left and a little to the right, moving your pelvis? And what you're doing is you're moving over the top of the left leg here. But feel that if you go too far out to the side, there's a sense that you sink a little bit. If you come back to the middle, you can rise up again. But then if you keep going and you go too far to the inside, there's a way that you'll sink again. And again, you can imagine this idea of the top of your leg as a ball and the socket of the pelvis that's moving over the top is like a bowl. And so if you were standing on top of a ball, trying to literally you know, balance on top of a soccer ball, something like that, imagine you want to be at the highest point of the curve. So as if you, if you take your pelvis a little inwards and outwards, see if you can actually feel that you rise up to one place that's the highest before you sink again as you keep going through. Okay, come back onto both legs. And then once again, you're gonna come onto the left leg. Just imagine, again, the ball of the femur and the hip socket, the pelvis standing on top here. And now can you move the pelvis just slightly forward and slightly back? But once again, you're looking for this sense that there's one place where you're the tallest and then you kind of fall off the front of the leg or you fall off the back of the leg. 
And that moment where you're the tallest, the leg probably does the least work. When you're falling off the leg, then you'll feel actually not just in the leg, you probably feel in many places that you have to invoke more muscular effort. At that tallest place, if you pause there, it's probably simpler to breathe than if you fall off the back and fall off the front and you sort of hang out there and listen to your breath. Okay, come back to the middle. And just notice after making this little investigation over your left leg, how do you distribute your weight? And then walk a little bit through the room, listening for how much support you get through each of your two legs and walking. Now these movements that you've just been doing, we're doing them just as a, almost kind of a warm up. There is a whole process we could do in standing and really getting pretty specific with those movements, but we're just giving a sense of it. So now pause and then bring your weight over the right leg, take the left foot out to the left, have the heel off the ground, just the toes of the left foot are balancing and move your pelvis a little inwards and outwards. In other words, move it to the right and the left, but you don't need to move much before you'll see that you're not at the very top of the ball of the femur. So you can move a little right and a little left, but then make the movement smaller and smaller. So you can really get a sense, again, as if you were literally standing on a ball, when are you standing on the highest point? And when have you begun to slip down a little to the inside or the outside? Then come back over both legs to rest for a moment. And then back onto the right leg and move the pelvis a little forward, a little back. And also just notice through your spine and up to your, the top of your head, when do you feel that you really have support? And when do you feel that the skeleton is not fully supported? Again, that other muscles have to come in and start doing extra work. Okay. So now again, just walk around the room a little bit, feeling the hip joints. Maybe what you've done is changed the sensation a little bit. And then come down onto the floor and rest on your back. Now, think of the distance from the top of your head to your left heel. And somewhere along that line is your left hip joint. So sense that line and try to sense how much space do you feel on the left side of the groin. And then measure the distance from the top of your head to your right heel. And include the feeling of the right hip joint. So which of those lines feels longer? And which hip joint feels like it has more space in it? If you just imagine the joint as a space, which space is more spacious? And do you make a connection between that sense of space and the side of your body where the distance from the top of the head down to the heel is a little longer? And then go back to the first line and breathe there and just get a sense of the movement of your breath through that side of your chest. Notice if there's any movement down into the belly, the pelvic floor, 
and then think of the line from the top of your head down to the other heel. Again, breathe. Imagine the space in your chest, your belly, the bowl of your pelvis. And now please put your hands on the front of your pelvis, just the right hand on the large bone on the outside, on the right, the iliac crest, and the left hand on the left side. And begin to make a very small movement of rolling your right leg in and out over the heel. But with your hands, feel how far does the leg go before the pelvis starts to move? How far to the outside before the pelvis seems to want to move and how far to the inside? And can you minimize the movement? It might be that you make a movement with your leg that would be hard for someone looking at you to see, but can you make a movement small enough where you sense something that's happening in the hip joint, but that you do not roll the pelvis left or right? Now you might use your hands to sort of hold the pelvis in place a little bit, but just see what's the experience. And then rest the right leg and try the same thing with your left leg. Now, take your right hand away from the front of your pelvis and roll the pelvis a little to the left for a moment so that you can slide your right hand behind the pelvis. So you can put the palm to the floor and then just place the right buttock on top of the right hand. And so the pelvis is a little tilted here. But try the same experiment, first with the right leg and then with the left leg. And so as you roll the leg in and out, as soon as the pelvis begins to move, that's a larger movement than you want. Make it smaller and smaller. And then if you find that almost anything you do with the leg wants to move the pelvis, well, then just imagine rolling the leg in and out. And then do this with the left leg. The right hand is still behind the right buttock. So the pelvis is a little bit turned to the left. So this is probably going to feel different with the left leg. And then take the right hand out and just rest for a moment. See if you feel anything interesting in terms of how the legs rest on the floor, any differences between the two sides. And then try this experiment one more time, but roll the pelvis a little to the right, place the left hand behind the left buttock and then roll back on top of the hand. And one at a time, roll each of the legs a little bit in and a little bit out, but keep minimizing the movement so you have the sense that the pelvis really doesn't do anything. And again, this might mean the movement is tiny or even imaginary. But you're doing this to kind of wake up just the possibility of really bringing your attention inside the hip joints and sensing that this is the meeting place of your pelvis and the top of your legs. And so there's different relationships between the legs and the pelvis that change the space inside the joint. Okay, take your hands out. Now, as you breathe, with each breath, just invite the breath to move a little lower and a little lower, allowing the belly to expand, not forcefully. It's a gradual process. And just inviting space inside the pelvis, the low abdomen down below the belly button. And now bend your knees and stand your feet.
And once again, place your hands on the outer ridges of your pelvis. And then with both hands, just move your hands a little down and inwards until you find the pubic bone. And just gently press through the skin to find pubic bone on the left and on the right. And then come back up along the outside of the pelvis and then reach around the sides and towards the back. And as you're touching the pelvis, try to imagine the internal space of the pelvis. You can roll your pelvis to one side and sort of roll onto one hand again, if you like. Maybe bring the other hand across so you have one hand behind and one hand on the front on just one side of the pelvis. Just breathe there and feel that you breathe to the space between your hands. And after doing that for a few breaths, you can switch the hands over so you have one hand behind the pelvis on the other side and the second hand in front. And here too, you might be noticing there's a different sense of space on one side or the other. Okay, so now rest your arms on the floor next to you. And once again, breathe down into the low belly. And each time you do that now, bring your attention to the pubic bone. And see if you can join the breath to help the pubic bone to reach a little down and away from your head. Maybe it's a small movement to begin. But with each inhale that you direct down into the low belly, just think of reaching the pubic bone down away from your head. And the more you reach, the more you get a sense that it reaches back towards the floor between your legs as well. And come back each time. And then pause. And can you begin to do these same movements, except do them on the exhale? You're still looking for a sense of expansion through the belly and reaching down and away from your head with the pubic bone. So the pelvis, of course, begins to roll down the floor. And see if you can feel that pull all the way through the length of your spine. You could look downwards with your eyes each time you make the movement. Have a sense that the chest is soft, that your chin gets pulled down towards your breastbone. and leave that alone. And now come back to the same thing. <clears throat> You're reaching the pubic bone down and away from your head. And there's already been an emphasis on the idea of creating space in the low belly. But just to understand why for a moment, come back and just gently contract 
your abdomen. Not a lot. But then if you begin to try to reach the pubic bone down away from your head with that small contraction, feel what happens there. Feel how that limits the movement. And even though it does limit the movement without going so far as fighting yourself, actually maintain that little contraction for a few movements so you really get a sense of how that kind of gums up the works a little bit. And then go back to expanding the belly, again, letting the chest be soft, feeling how the whole spine is pulled downwards. And of course, when your pelvis rolls down the floor, you feel that you make a space behind the low back. So let's look at one more detail here. If you pause for a moment, but then you just, instead of having your attention with the pubic bone, if you were simply to think of lifting your low back away from the floor, arching your low back, you'll see that that does in fact also roll the pelvis down away from your head. But since the effort that you're making there, and there's a sense of just almost, it's like those vertebrates as if you were moving them directly forward to the ceiling. So stop doing that and then bring your attention back to the pubic bone. And once more, reach down away from your head and back towards the floor and pay attention to the space behind your low back. See if you can feel that maybe the arch you make is a little lower and longer. You don't move so far away from the floor here. And the idea is that although something may happen in low back, you don't have to work as hard there. Instead, in the area of your groin, your upper legs, there's something you're doing, it's almost like you're pulling the pelvis down onto the top of your legs. Just to be sure, maybe one more time, go back to the idea of initiating the movement by arching in the low back, but feel the sense of effort. And then replace that idea again with reaching the pubic bone down and away from your head, back towards the floor. And leave it all alone. Take a rest. If you like, you can lengthen your legs. And then stand your feet again. And now please bring your right knee up over your chest and you can clasp your hands just under the knee fingers interlaced, keep the thumb together with the other fingers. But please do this without feeling that you're pulling the knee up towards yourself. So can you have a sense that the leg really hangs from the hands? And to clarify that, just keep your hands where they are, but think that you are reaching both arms away from your head. And you'll see that you can create a movement in your shoulders and you can create space so that your knee actually moves a little away from your head a little bit. So do that a couple times and sort of reach away and then just get a sense that the knee is hanging. And now slowly begin to draw the knee a little towards you. So you bend your elbows, keep them close in rather than having them wing out to the side. And then let the knee go away. You don't need a large movement here. Just bring the knee up a little towards your chest and then let it go down, letting the arms straighten. And feel that when you do this, the result is that you're also rolling the pelvis a little up in the direction of your head. And then it rolls back down as you let the knee go away. Can feel the movement of pressure up and down the floor. Have enough 
clarity with your left leg that it can be a pillar of support for you. But just feel in the right hip joint, there's not much happening. This is a movement where the pelvis and the right leg, they just move together. Okay, so put the foot down for a moment. And then once again, bring it up over your chest, clasp the hands below the kneecap. And now see if it would be possible to bring the knee the tiniest bit closer to your head, but in such a way that you feel you do not move your pelvis. In other words, if you put your attention on the pressure on the back of your pelvis to the floor, when you bring your knee towards you, it doesn't move up the floor. If anything, you kind of have your attention on the lower half of your sacrum staying down. Now you might feel that the second you move your knee towards you, the pelvis wants to roll. So again, if necessary, just minimize the movement minimize it even more. And if it's still creating a movement of the pelvis, you can even just imagine. But something that might be useful here is to think about the femur. Your hands are holding near the knee and they're bringing the knee a little towards your head and away. If you think of how this movement passes through the shaft of the femur into the hip joint, if the pelvis doesn't move, if the ball of the femur was moving inside the joint and you know the direction the knee is going, what do you imagine would be happening with the ball of the femur inside the joint? Okay, put the foot back on the ground, rest your arms and just sense the feeling in each of your two hip joints now. And then bring the left knee up over the chest and hold it. Again, you can make a movement with your arms once the hands are clasped as if you were reaching away from your head just to feel that you're not beginning from a place of pulling on your leg. But then do bring the knee just a little bit up and then let the knee go away and allow the pelvis to move here. And so feel that here, once again, you have an undifferentiated movement, the left leg and the pelvis, they move together towards the head and away. And then after a few movements, pause and just Really sense into the connection on the back, connection to the floor, and see if you can maintain that connection as you bring the left knee just the tiniest bit towards your chest, and then let it go. And then the tiniest bit towards your chest, and then let it go. And again, if the knee is coming up towards you, what is the ball of the femur doing inside the left hip joint. Okay, put the left foot back on the ground, and keep your feet standing. And now go back to the movements that you were doing before, just to see if anything feels new about them. So you reach the pubic bone down away from the head. Think of the belly expanding widening across the front, and allowing the spine to follow, arching in the low back, but not too much. And just see if there's any sense that there's something new in the movement. Think about how your pubic bone, it's passing down between the thighs. Okay, and rest. 
And now go back to having your right leg up over your chest, hold with your hands. And this time, make the movement with your pelvis that you were just doing. Reach the pubic bone down and away from the head a little bit. And in the beginning, we'll do this in an undifferentiated way. So the knee gets pulled down and the knee pulls on your arms. And you might find that it feels nice to actually tilt your head a little backwards here. And then each time the head returns to the starting position as the knee comes up, but then you reach down with the pubic bone, you reach down with the knee, it pulls through your arms. And the head may tilt a little backwards, the chin coming away from the chest. Okay. And now just hold the knee there. But breathe down and expand your belly, and especially the right side of the belly. Can you begin to think that you press your belly into the top of the right thigh? But this time, with your hands, keep the knee where it is. So rather than pushing the knee down away from you, just see if you can expand the belly into the right thigh. And then feeling the support under your left foot, begin to reach the pubic bone down and away from your head again. But this time, try to minimize, or in fact, tr try to actually eliminate any movement of the knee down away from you. Now, if that doesn't feel possible, again, what you do is you just make the movement smaller and smaller. But what you can imagine, just like when both feet were standing, is how the pubic bone moves past the thighs. So imagine the right side of the pubic bone reaching down past the right thigh. Think of expanding down into your belly as you do this. And if you need to, you're gently pulling with your arms to prevent the knee from going down. But you're really looking for a sense of space opening up. Okay, so pause and put the foot on the floor for a moment. And just do a couple of those movements again that you've been doing, reaching the pubic bone down and away from the head. Both feet are on the floor now, but maybe something feels a little different in the right hip joint. But notice that this movement, it closes the front of the hip joints, right? You just think of the even from what someone could see by looking at you, that the belly is moving towards the thighs. So you're closing that crease at the top of your leg. So it stands to reason that something is happening in the back of the joint. There's an opening in the back of the joint. So now bring your right knee up over your chest, hold it again, and go back to what you were doing. You do your best to keep the knee in place, but reach the pubic bone down and away. But now think about your right sit bone. And can you sense that when you make this movement, when the pelvis rolls down, the sit bone moves away from the back of your right knee? And if you like, if your arm is long enough, you could hold the knee just with your left hand and reach down and see if you can actually touch your right sit bone with your right hand. And then make a few more movements there and just feel that the right sit bone reaches away from the back of the knee. Okay, very nice. Place the foot on the floor. And now bring the left knee up over your chest. Hold below the knee. And once again, reach the pubic bone down and away from the head, but the knee stays where it is. Maybe the elbows bend a little bit to accommodate the movement. The whole spine is alive to this movement. But again, really become interested in the sense of the pubic bone brushing past the left thigh this time. 
And as you feel the belly press into the thigh on the left side, closing the front of the joint, can you imagine how you're reaching your left sit bone towards the floor and away from your, the back of your left knee? And now as you make these movements, can you make the very tiniest movement of actually pulling your knee a little up, even as the pubic bone and the sit bone are reaching down, closing the front of the joint and opening in the back. And then switch your legs again so you can try that last maneuver on the right side. You hold your right knee. Now you have the left foot on the floor. Reach the pubic bone down and away without moving the knee. Lengthening the sit bone away from the back of the knee. And then even using your arms to pull the knee just a little bit up towards your head. Feeling the length all along the back of your thigh. Okay. And then. Bring both feet to the floor, and if you like, you can lengthen the legs and rest. But try to sense now this space in the hip joints. What do you notice if you do what you did in the beginning, measuring the distance from the top of your head down to each heel? and then including the space inside the groin, the movement of your breath. Bend your knees, stand your feet. And now, since you're gonna come back to a movement you've done many, many times already, go very gently as you reach the pubic bone down away from the head between the thighs, making a low arch over the floor. But let's notice a couple more details here. Each time you make that movement, what's happening in the back of your knees? Can you feel that the space there is closing a little bit? So if you think of the back of your thighs now, can you imagine that you could help yourself make this movement by having the image of reaching the back of your thighs towards your heels. So this movement that takes the pelvis down the floor, it's also closing the space behind the knees. And think of the connection of the back of your pelvis to the floor. Just think that it's, it's almost like it's gripping the floor like a tire of a car as it goes down the road and it pushes the road backwards to take the car forwards. Think that the back of your pelvis is pushing the floor up in the direction of your head. And that you can also help yourself by thinking that the soles of your feet are pulling the floor, right? To pull the pelvis down on top of the legs. Let the chest be soft. Can you feel space in the roof of your mouth? Soften your eyes. Okay, leave that alone, take a rest. And now bring your right knee up over your chest. So First, stand the feet if you had the legs long, and then bring the right leg up, hold below the knee as you've been doing. And just breathe here, but breathe to expand the belly. Just see if expanding the belly, you feel something changes in the hip joints. And now as you breathe in, actually draw the belly up and in under your ribs and feel how you create an expansion in your chest. 
And then can you create that expansion in the belly on the exhale? So you breathe in, draw the belly up and in, and breathe out, expanding the chest. Or I'm sorry, I, I misspoke there. You breathe in, and you're drawing the belly up and in, and then you're expanding the belly as you exhale. And now each time you exhale, can you just draw the knee a little towards you? Okay, place the foot back on the floor, switch over to the left leg. As you breathe in, you draw the belly up and in, and then you expand the belly on the exhale. And at first you're just holding the knee there, but then each time you expand the belly, you just draw the knee a little closer. And once again, feel how the belly can press into the thigh, but imagine the opening in the back of the joint. Include the image of the pubic bone reaching down. It's essentially the same movement as you did before, but we use this idea of expanding the belly, expanding the chest. Okay, place the legs back on the floor for a moment. Reach the pubic bone down between the legs and towards the floor, pulling your spine down. And now change the movement just a little bit so that the pubic bone reaches towards your right heel. Feel the right side of the pubic bone brushing past the right thigh. Feel how this movement passes all the way through your spine. And then make a few movements where you're reaching towards the left heel. And then back down the middle again. Okay, now pause and lengthen your right leg on the floor. The left foot remains standing. And once again, make this movement of reaching the pubic bone down and away from the head. Now think of just reaching straight down the middle, even though the legs are now asymmetrical. But remember this idea that the thigh, and you can think of the left thigh, it reaches towards the left heel. But also think that the right thigh, the top of the thigh, it reaches into the floor. And each time you make the movement, you can think of lengthening your right heel down and away from you. So the front of the foot actually comes up towards your shin. But what you're doing is you're lengthening your right leg through the heel to help you pull the pelvis down, but the legs are asymmetrical. The left thigh reaches towards the left heel and the back of the right thigh reaches into the floor. Similar idea with both legs, but they're just configured differently. And so now switch the legs, have the right foot standing, the left leg long, lengthen the left heel to help you reach the pubic bone down and away from the head. And of course, the right thigh is reaching towards the right heel. And now stand both feet, begin making this movement again down the middle. And now once more, aim towards your right heel. And as you make the movement, can you feel that the action through your right leg, it could actually begin to make the right foot feel a little lighter. And now each time you move your pubic bone in the direction of your right heel, lift the front of your right foot. So keep the heel grounded, but you flex the ankle with each movement. And now change to move the pubic bone down and away from the head, but more in the direction of the left heel. 
And as you continue, lift the front of the left foot. Just see how that extra movement of the foot, does it change something in the hip joint? Go down the middle again, but lift the front of both feet as the pelvis goes down the floor. The pressure is moving onto the heels. Okay, take a rest. You can keep your feet standing or lengthen the legs out on the floor. And now bend your knees and stand your feet. Bring the right leg up over the chest and hold below the knee with the right hand and then bring your left knee up over the chest to hold with your left hand. And a couple of times, move your pelvis down the floor away from your head and you might just find that you're lengthening the knees and if you like to do a couple movements like that, you can let the back of the head tilt back. Maybe the chest is pulled down. But then can you imagine, so come back and just hold the legs there. Imagine that your feet were against a wall. Reach the pubic bone down and away from the head, but see if you can keep the knees where they are. It might be a small movement, but have the sense of reaching the pubic bone down between the thighs towards the floor without taking the knees away from your head. And then see if it helps you each time you do this to lengthen through the backs of your lower legs, to lengthen the heels so that the tops of your feet come up towards your chin or up towards your shin, I should say. Up towards your chin, but your shin's a little closer, so it's a little bit better landmark. And just notice that this action through the legs, it's, it's the same action as when the feet were on the floor and you were thinking of pulling the pelvis down onto your legs. But now you don't have that leverage of using the floor. Okay, so put your feet down on the floor. So you have that leverage again. Just make two or three movements, reaching the pubic bone down and away, expanding through the belly. Soft chest, soft eyes, easy breath. If you like, make a couple movements towards one heel and towards the other. Okay. And now, once again, bring both knees up over your chest, but this time use both hands to hold the right knee. So you're not holding the left leg. And now as you once again reach the pubic bone down and away from your head, without putting your left leg back on the floor, begin to straighten your leg down away from you. And you don't have to straighten it completely, but you open the back of the knee and you reach the heel down away from the head a little bit above the floor and use the weight of the leg to help you reach the pubic bone down, brushing past the right thigh, but you're keeping the right knee where it is or even pulling it a little up towards your head as you go. All right, and then place your feet on the floor for a moment. And then once again, bring both knees up over the chest, but this time hold your left knee. And as you reach the pubic bone down and away, you begin to extend your right leg, your right heel down and away from you to help generate that movement. of Taking the pelvis down away from your head, but draw the left knee a little bit up. Feel the belly pressing into the left thigh. And you're lengthening out like you were 
pushing something away with your right heel. Okay, and then place both feet on the floor. And before you make one last series of movements, and it should be very familiar to you now, but don't make the movement yet. Just think when you reach the pubic bone down and away from your head, what happens in the hip joints? How do you imagine the surfaces of the top of your legs inside the socket, how the pelvis moves? So the pubic bone goes down away from the head, back towards the floor, brushing past both thighs. And the backs of the thighs are reaching towards the heels. So the front of the joints is closing and there's a sense of opening in the back. Maybe you're making the movement now. And include all of these different parts of the image. The backs of the knees are closing. And think even what's happening in the front of your ankles. Wouldn't they be closing a little bit to help pull you down the floor? Feel the length through the Achilles tendons in the back. Make this movement pleasurable. Don't fight, don't strain. Just see the more you have a clear picture of how all the parts are working together, how can this movement become increasingly effortless for you? Okay, leave everything alone, lengthen your legs and rest. One last time, measure the distance from the top of your head down to your left heel, down to your right heel, feeling the space inside the hip joints, the length of your spine. And then bend your knees and stand your feet, roll to the side and come up into standing. Very slowly shift your weight over the left leg and back to the middle and over the right leg. And just see, is it clearer now how you can find the top of each leg? And even though you're in standing, can you still imagine that space there? and then walk through the room. And you can think of how the legs swing below the pelvis. And you can also think of how the pelvis moves over the top of the legs. Okay, so we're going to end our class here. See you next time. Take care.